Hi folks, welcome to the course, Environmental Sociology. Hopefully you all are looking forward to it. All right, Environmental Sociology. What exactly is that? Well, it's the study of community in the largest possible sense. Uh, it takes an emphasis on understanding the origins of and proposing solutions to social and biophysical conflicts and um, it really focuses in on the study of the interaction of natural and human communities. Uh, so when we talk about community, we're talking about the, bios the biosphere, the biotic community, we're talking about human communities, we're talking about um, how those communities interact with each other, and um, hopefully we're looking to uh, solutions to some of the problems that we are seeing in these biotic and social communities and um, hopefully we're going to try and use scientific method and, and research and uh, theoretical understanding of what we find to make the world a better place, make the world a safer, more sustainable place. Um, there are three theoretical lenses that we tend to use and we will use in this course. Um, uh, this is seen as the, the dialectic. And the first lens is the material. Uh, in other words, how consumption, the economy, science, technology, development, population and the health of our bodies shape our environmental conditions themselves. Then there's the ideal or how culture, culture being learned behavior, ideology, moral values, risk and social experience influence the way we think about and act towards the environment. And then there's the practical or how we can bring about a more ecological society through governance, mobilization, and the politics of our everyday lives. Um, we can think about this dialectic in reference to uh, the, uh, the yin-yang. The material and the ideal are separate entities, but as you can see, there are parts of each other um, in each of them. And then there's that realm that exists in between uh, called the practical. How can we come up with solutions that are uh, created based on the material or the idealistic views of um, our environment? How can we interact in ways that um, create cleaner environments, allow us to use the resources uh, for a longer um, periods of time or uh, possibly sustainably use them over long periods of time. Some common themes among these lenses, of course, um, uh, the dialogic or interactive and unfinished character of causality in, the, in environmental sociology. Um, uh, we are using this dialectic to uh, try and understand what's going on out there. But um, in many respects, it's an unfinished understanding. And uh, there can be different solutions somewhere down the line. We're also looking at the interplay of the material and ideal factors with each other, uh, which constitute the practical condi conditions of lived experience, that practical area in between uh, the two uh, pol seemingly polar um, positions. We're looking at the central role of social inequality and environmental conflict. As we will see throughout this course, social inequality um, uh, is not, uh, is, is not, it's not a good position to be in. Being in a socially unequal position generally uh, from an environmental perspective is going to deliver you most of the bads of the economy 
and not enough of the good. So you're going to get a whole lot of pollution. You're going to get a whole lot of cancer. You're going to get a whole lot of um, uh, noise. Um, you're going to get a whole just uh, the bads of the economic industrial society are going to be delivered at your doorstep. Um, we're looking at the connections between the local and the global. As globalization has taken uh, a root in the late 20th and early 21st century, um, we are drawn away from the local. We sometimes forget about the local, but there is always a connection between where stuff is produced and where it's distributed to. We're also thinking about the power of the metaphor of community for understanding these sociological and eco ecological dynamics. Um, uh, shared bonds and relationships are the underlying support for community in the first place. And uh, it, it, healthy, sustainable communities have healthy, shared and communal bonds and um, unhealthy ones produce dysfunctions and um, and unfortunately we know how to move past these dysfunctions uh, it's it's not knowledge that's keeping us from creating healthy sustainable environments and communities it's uh, power. And the important influence of political institutions and the commitments in our environmental practices. Uh, no time can this be uh, more apparent than the United States just pulling out of the Paris Climate Accords. We are now the only country in the world, ladies and gentlemen, that does not, that is not a signatory on the Paris Climate Accords accords. Uh, political institutions and commitments in our environmental practices are important. It is important that we are not a signatory to that accord. Um, we also need to think about an ecological dialogue. This idea that material and ideal dimensions of the environment depend upon and interact with each other. One cannot exist without the other. And we have to accept that there's a constant conversation and interplay between this material and ideal uh, set of dimensions. And of course, that we must see them together because that's where it all works out for us in our practical daily interactions, how we reproduce our daily lives on um, a long-term perspective. When we use this ecological dialogue, it gives us a way to conceptualize power, it gives us a way to conceptualize the or environmental relations that shape our ability to take action. And it creates relations of power, included, including organizational factors of materiality and knowledge factors of our ideas, which in turn ultimately shape each other. Um, chapter one makes us think about the environmental predicament. Why do we have a, con a concern for the current condition of the, e the ecological climate? Well, there are challenges to sustainability, there are challenges to social justice, and there are challenges to the basic beauty of ecology in and of itself. These issues will be considered throughout our discussions and they will be instrumental all semester long. 
these issues impact most of the more specific environmental issues we face today. When you think about the material in this class, you want to run it through this rubric here. How is it thought of in reference to sustainability? How is it thought of in reference to social justice? And how is it thought of in reference to the beauty of ecology? Nature has a beauty in and of itself, and there is an argument to be made for protecting it simply for its aesthetic beauty. When we think about sustainability, the essential question is how long can we continue doing what we are doing? Some of the specific challenges to sustainability are energy, global warming, ozone, particulates and acid rain, and threats to land and water. When we think about global warming, we have to consider that the 10 warmest years on record all occurred since 1990. That's the consequences of global warming or climate change. I like to think more of it as climate change. Uh, it's less politically charged than global warming. Um, the consequences, potential shifting climate zones, we're already seeing this um, in the state of Colorado. Winter is um, less severe and it's coming at different times. It's coming earlier and leaving earlier, which is creating um, uh, shifts in the way water is delivered. Um, you might see increased incidences of disease, flooding, death, uh, declines in food production per acre, uh, increased natural disasters, unusual warm temperatures cause devastating heat waves that kill many people. The idea that there are two ozone problems you have to understand the ozone layer protects us from harmful UV light. Rapid depleting of ozone layers, especially over the South Pole, are creating some serious health effects for those living in those areas. As we know, the most likely cause of the, the, um, the holes in the ozone uh, were chlorofluorocarbons um, produced from air conditioning units. And that actually was a pretty uh, big success story in protecting the environment. The world rallied around controlling CFCs and the ozone layers are actually starting to uh, deplete. But there's also the problem of ground level ozone or brown haze or smog. You see this in a lot of cities and um, the consequences to this are rising rates of skin cancer, uh, premature death and loss of crops. We're also seeing uh, acid rain, small particles that create whitish smog and dust residues from burning fossil fuels um, are acidifying our rain and the consequences of this are premature death, respiratory problems, um, damage to plant tissue, and of course threats to land and water, um, expansion of industry, over depletion of aquifers, um, it's affecting the freshwater and groundwater and a loss of farmland due to urbanization and development.